Do you guys remember this? Remember this from over 10 years ago? Some of my earliest videos? This is uh, the computer that I had in my car. Uh, so this was a computer that I bought online, specially designed the pieces for being used in a car. Uh, we have a little you know, hard drive here, you know, not a solid state. This is before you really, I mean, solid states existed, but you weren't commonly used. You know, I'm going back again over 10 years. Uh, and then I had this motherboard and it came in this case, which was supposed to be, um, you know, uh, kind of like a, a heat uh, sink basically and shock absorbing. And it has a special power supply right here that detected when the car was powered on and off. And when it was powered on and off, it would trigger this to shut down the computer properly so the computer wouldn't be running all the time. And that was all hooked up to a touch screen like this that slid out and went up. I don't know if this is, I don't think it's the one, this one was mine. I, I installed one of these in a friend's car as well. And then later on when he stopped using it, I think he gave me the screen back. Um, very expensive little thing. But that kind of just reminded me of part of this project. Because nowadays if you were to do something like this, I mean, really, you would just probably just put a, a tablet in your dash. But if you wanted to do something like uh, uh, an Arduino, an Arduino, yes, no, yes, an Arduino. A Raspberry Pi, that's what I meant, a Raspberry Pi. If you want to do a Raspberry Pi, you got to power it, and there's a lot of different ways to power it. And I actually just got this. Hey, what is this? This is this is the wiring stuff that I got for my dash cam that I was talking about in the last video. Dash cam came with a wire, because it's USB powered, to plug into the 12 volt uh, plug in my car. But the 12 volt plug in my car doesn't turn on and off when the car turns on and off. Uh, and I don't want to drain my battery. So I ordered this online. This cost me about 11, 12 bucks on Amazon. Um, there were a few that were cheaper. If you want on eBay, you can also find stuff similar for about $4. But this one comes with a bunch of different adapters and all the fuses we need. So what is this? Let's, let's open this up. Let's see. Let's bring this over here. I haven't opened this yet. So you guys are seeing this with me for the first time. Again, I just ordered this yesterday. So... Basically, we have all this. This could, could be clamped directly to something. You got your little power converter here, and it leads to a micro USB. Although I think, yeah, there's an adapter here if you needed, um, oh, sorry, mini USB, and it has an adapter for micro USB. So great, if you wanted to power something like Raspberry Pi, you could do that too. And the way you hook this up, so you hook this up, you connect it to one of these adapters, the, the positive side. The ground would just go to, you know, a metal uh, screw in your car. And then this would go to one of these. So what are these? And this was, this is what comes, I guess, it's got all these different ones. These are fuse jumpers. So we have all these fuses in here that come with it for the car. And then this is a little pry bar and little sticky things to run the wire with. But what happens here is in your car, you have fuses. So what you do is you pick one of the fuses, you pull it out, you plug this in, you put that fuse in there and the matching fuse in here. So you have two fuses in here. So it's just a little fuse jumper. So you can use whatever fuse. So you can pick a fuse in the car that's either on all the time or turns off when you turn the car off. So you can figure that out by testing, you know, the different fuses or just reading the fuse label and figuring out what turns on and what turns off. But something about this one that I really liked is this little power brick here, this little power supply, supposedly will detect, it will keep the device on even when the car is shut off. So if I did choose to put it into a fuse that shuts off, when I shut off the car, it would shut everything off. But if I put it in a fuse that is on, even when the car is shut off, this will stay on and will keep my camera on. Or again, if you were hooking it up to like a Raspberry Pi or something, it would keep it on, but it would keep, it would monitor the power. And if the power uh, in your car drops below a certain amount, it will shut off the device. I Meaning you can leave that device on all the time, it, but if you're out of your car for a long time, eventually it will shut it off, leaving you with enough power to make sure your car will start the next morning. And of course, then your alternator will recharge your battery while you're driving in theory. So that's why I went with this one because it came with all these, again, I could have gotten like just this um, with one of these adapters for like four bucks on eBay and then had to wait it a month for it. But on Amazon for 11 bucks, I got this with this and the fuses and the adapter all for 11 bucks and I got it next day shipping, which was nice. It's one of those, you know, eBay is great uh, and so is Amazon, just depending on how quick you want something. And I kind of wanted this today. So, yeah, I'm going to hook this up and talk about it more. Uh, but that's, that's the basic concept. So, again, just to, to review how it works, this goes to ground. This will hook to one of these fuse jumpers. And, again, I'm just going to go to my fuse box, which is right under my steering wheel, pop out one of the fuses, pop it in here, put the matching fuse in here, and then plug this in where that fuse was. And it's now using that fuse box 
both devices, the original and this new device, have a fuse, which is important. Um, and uh, and again, it will. I can hook it up to something that's on all the time, and this will shut it down if the p car power gets too low. Or I can hook it to a fuse that turns on and off when the car turns on and off. I'm probably going to go with the route of something that's on all the time and then let this thing shut down. Hopefully it works right and I don't wake up with a dead battery. So, yeah, I'm excited about this. So here we are at my car. This is a 2016 Mazda 3. Most cars have a fuse box near the engine and then one inside. Now, I am not a mechanic or an electrician, so take what I say, you know, with a grain of salt. Um, if you don't know where your fuse box is, usually it's, it's down here or by your um, glove box. Just Google or YouTube search your model car fuse box, and there'll usually be videos on where it is or look in your owner's manual if you want to go that route. Mine is right here. And uh, it actually has a little pull tab right here. It took me a minute to find. It says pull for fuse box. I pull that and it pops right out. Let's have a look at this. Here are some of my fuses. And you can see they're color coded and have the numbers on them. Now, uh, fuse boxes, usually I don't see one in here. Uh, well, first of all, if you look at the plastic backing, it might be a little hard to see in the video, but you can see those markings. It's telling you what each fuse is for. Some of them say windows, some of them say outlet. So you can figure out what they are by looking at this, or of course you can find schematics online. Uh, lots of times fuse boxes will have little, little plastic things to pull the fuses out. I'm not seeing one in here, but uh, usually I know that the one by the engine does. So let's have a look at that. So here we are. This is the, my motor, my engine. And um, this is actually just a few minutes ago. It was the first time I opened this. This is my fuse box here. It's usually in this area. And of course, what we're looking for is back here on the plastic backing. Again, there's labels here on what all this stuff is for. And this little white tool is what I was coming in here for. This is for pulling the fuses out, a little, little gripper tool. Your car should have one of these. If not, you can pull them out with your fingers. It's just a lot easier to use this. But I also notice my car has spare fuses. That is so awesome. I don't think I've ever seen that before in cars where it has the extra fuses in here for at least a few of them. Obviously not the, the bigger fuses, but that, that's really nice. Uh, I tell you what, uh, I'm not promoting, you know, I'm not sponsored by Mazda, but this is my third Mazda vehicle and I, I love them. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, here is our little clip, so we should be able to go into the car and pull out the fuses with that. So again, I should be able to grab out one of these fuses uh, with this little tool. Again, I can look on the back here and see what all these different ones are. Some of them say windows, some of them outlet. I can get a tester, you know, just a multimeter and figure out which one of these is on all the time, which one is off. And at this point, I just want to get this thing hooked up. I can always uh, remove it, you know, up and down real easy later on. So I'm just going to pick one of these, pull it out, and, uh, and put it in. So I don't care right now whether it's on when the car is off or not. Um, again, I'm trying to read sunroof, uh, outlet. There's a lot to say outlet. I don't know. I only have one outlet, so I'm not sure which one they're talking about here. Uh, but this top 15 amp looks like it's a... I'm trying to read it and hold the phone here at the same time. I'm going to go for this one right here. See if this fits in here. Oh, I'm holding it there backwards. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put down the phone and pull that out. You know, it's funny is I, I pulled that one out and that is the outlet the camera's hooked to. Because as soon as I unplugged it, I heard the camera make its little tone that it was shutting down. Because again, the, the camera has a built-in uh, battery, and so it detects when the power shut down and doesn't just cut the power to the camera, but slowly shuts it down. So this is the the fuse I just pulled out. I just need to find the matching fuse that came with my little uh, kit here, and we will take that. So that one seems to match that. Now I just got to find these little fuse jumpers, find the one that, that matches that. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to go with, I think this one here looks like a match. So these fuses should fit into here. Let's go ahead and grab those. Uh, shove one in here. Again, I need a hand to do this. I'm going to put the camera down. There we go, they're both seated in there nicely. I'm gonna stop right there and once again say that I am not an electrician or a mechanic, so take what I say with a grain of salt. Also, this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, it's just an overview. There are a lot of detailed videos out there on doing this sort of thing. Uh, just YouTube search um, fuse tap or fuse jumper and you should come up with good instructions. But, filling with the camera and stuff, I realized after I was done that I had put the fuses in uh, the wrong order. Uh, so fuses can go either way, so it doesn't matter which way the fuse itself goes, but 
Uh, on the adapter, there's the prongs that connect into where the into the fuse box, and the section where the fuse goes in that's close to that should be the original fuse. And then the fuse that goes into the top that goes actually goes out by the wire to the camera or whatever device you're powering, that should be the fuse that came with your jumper or fuse tap. So I did the backwards in the video. I realized that as soon as I was done filming and I switched them, didn't hurt anything, but uh, make sure you put those in the right order. Also, something I didn't mention while I was filming this out there is that for the most part, fuses can go either way. But when you're installing, installing a fuse tap like this, there is a, a load side, which is usually the side that's on the far side uh, from the wire that's coming out of it. So you want to do, do want to get a multimeter and figure out which side in the fuse box is the hot side. Um, I believe, and again, I'm not an electrician, that if you put it in backwards, everything will work fine. Uh, but if you blow a fuse, you're going to end up blowing both the fuses rather than just one, I think is the only issue. But it seems like it could be worse. Anyway, make sure you know which side is the hot side. And the hot side will be the side of the fuse jumper that doesn't have the wire coming out of it in most cases. But look up the information for the fuse uh, tap that you get. And here's just a, a visual on what I was saying. So this is the little wire tap jumper. And this is the fuse it came with. So when you pull out the fuse in the car, the fuse from the car should go in this bottom one, the closest to these connections here. And then the fuse that came with the tap should go up here because that's going to control where this wire goes. In the video, when I first did it, I did them backwards and quickly realized that didn't hurt anything, but there's that. And then again, there's the hot side. Uh, and again, check with your your wire tap, but there should be a hot side, which should be the side that's furthest away from the device. So this is the hot side. So you'll need a multimeter or some sort of detector to check your fuse box and figure out which side is hot. Because with a regular fuse, you plug it in. It doesn't matter what side you plug it in. But this, I guess, if you put it in backwards, uh, so when I'm plugging in this car, if I plug it in this way rather than this way, it's going to, I guess it can loop back and burn out both fuses if there's a problem rather than just the one fuse that it needs to. So... Yeah, again, look up the information for what you buy. There's a lot of uh, good videos out there on YouTube. This, again, is just a quick overview, but I wanted to uh, make you aware of this. So anyway, back to the video. And hopefully this will fit back in this little compartment here. I'll be able to plug this in where that fuse was. Sure enough, I was able to plug it right into there. And as soon as I did, I heard the camera come back on because it's still plugged into the outlet over there. But now we have this little end here. So we're going to take the rest of our connecting wire here and this positive terminal should slip into there and then this ground should just go to a bolt on the car, on the chassis of the car somewhere. And then I can run this wire up to the camera just, you know, just by pulling back the plastic stuff on the car and running it. You can pull this down, you know. And just slide it up just like I did on the other side of the car with the current wire. And then, let me, hi. And then, uh, and then it should turn on and off when the car turns on and off. Um, and it should be on all the time since it's hooked to the outlet, it was on all the time. But this particular wire uh, at least advertises that it won't let your car battery die, that when the power gets below a certain amount, it will turn off the camera or whatever device you have hooked to it. Uh, which is great, which means that thing will be recording even when my car is parked somewhere until the battery on the car gets too low. I don't know how great that is for the car battery. Um, I think there's, there's things constantly running. Again, I'm not an electrician or a mechanic, um, but it won't let the battery drain completely, which I know with lead-acid batteries is not a good thing to let them drain completely. It should uh, make sure there's still enough power in the battery to start the car, and then again, your alternator will recharge your car. And again, I'm doing this for a dash cam, but what, when I got this wire, I thought, wow, this would be a super easy way to hook up something like an Arduino. Or if you were did want to put a tablet in your dash, you could use this device. And then your the, the car will keep charging the tablet so the car gets to a certain amount and then it turns off. But then the battery and the tablet would keep going. So, and, you know, I mean, this, this car already has, you know, a dash screen, which is running Linux, as I've talked about in previous videos. And I have a root shell on. Um, and I do someday hope to do more with. But again, right now... It is summer in Florida, and it is hot out here. 
so it, it's not fun sitting in my car playing with this, although I, I just need to get hooked to my Wi-Fi, which it does have Wi-Fi. Anyway, that's a whole other subject. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, you know, connect the rest of this wire up and run the wire up and hook it to the camera. Uh, but everything should be good. And now I have the camera hooked up to the same fuse that it's hooked up to before. Uh, so it's going to be on all the time until the car battery gets too low. But hopefully, again, this device will keep my, my car from completely dying. So I'll have the camera recording when I'm driving and when it's parked somewhere. So if someone tries to vandalize or tries to break in my car and doesn't, because if they break in, they'll probably just grab that camera. Um, but again, so, you know, I spent 11 or 12 bucks on this wiring unit, which could definitely be used for other things. And I have all these extra little fuse adapters, too, which might come in handy. I'll hold on to those. Um, but uh, I didn't realize it was going to be this easy. When I first thought I was going to hook something up, in the past when I've hooked up stuff like this, I've wired into the cigarette outlet, and I just wired directly into it, which probably isn't the best thing. You probably should probably go in through a fuse like this. Um, so, uh, yeah, this seems like it's going to work out, and it's super simple. You know, um, I didn't. I, all I had to do was pop open that fuse box. Uh, I'm going to have to, you know loosen a screw to, to put the ground on, and then running wire in cars like this, if you've never done it, it's super simple. Uh, this wiring kit came with this little blue thing. The camera actually came with a bigger, nicer one. Uh, you can just do it with your hands sometimes, or a screwdriver, but you might scratch it using the plastic pry tools. You just, you don't, you don't need to pull anything. So like, an example, like right here, you know, you, you pull it, you run the wire in here, see how my finger's going in there? You just run the wire there, and then you're up over your window, all this pulls down just enough. See, I'm sticking my finger in there, you just run the wire along there. There's nothing to take apart, really. So, yeah, I'm excited about this. I did not know that devices exactly like this. Like I said, I knew they made, uh, you know, USB connectors that you could connect to your battery and stuff. I didn't realize they had these little fuse jumpers. These things are awesome. So, anyway, I hope you found this useful. And again, I'm just hooking up the dash cam, but now I might hook up other things in your room. I mean, I already have... Okay, I, I should pull out that computer and see if there's another input. Maybe I can hook an Arduino to it and have two Linux systems running in my car. Anyway, I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.